to another episode of Talking Fast. Alongside me, just like every single week, is Manager Jacob. What's up? What's up, Sarah? Indeed. <laughs> What's up, Sarah? Indeed. <laughs> I ask you the same thing every week, and you're still not prepared for uh, it. Yeah, I've, I've never have an answer for you. Um, you're, you're just already thinking ahead to what are you eating or drinking this week? I was actually, I was, my head was stuck in the clouds thinking about what I was eating this week, Sarah, because I'm on a vanilla ice cream kick. I grew up uh, as a kid, had a little ice cream as a little after dinner snack every single night a lot of, a lot of it yeah okay. and uh actually i was one of the original vloggers i should find the clip i, don't I know was one of it. the original vloggers yeah pre i predated youtube i would walk around my house growing up with like the old family handy cam and just talk into it vlogging and there's this like long vlog that i do about um, ice cream talking about ooh, what am i gonna get for a snack <laughs> and i go and make myself some ice cream <laughs> So, uh, what type of vanilla ice cream? Okay, well, like this is the brand? thing. So, I get a, just a base of vanilla ice cream. Doesn't matter really the brand, but I'm talking about at home Sundays. I love you know that. What I've been doing? I love a Sunday. Just uh, assorted nuts right on top. A little bit of peanut butter drizzled on top. A little bit. Like, of, do you melt it and then you drizzle it? Well, mm-hmm. I use the organic peanut butter. That's oh, uh, so it's already peanut, drizzly. So it's, it's already, already drizzly, drizzly <laughs> enough. If anyone knows organic peanut butter, that shit is ready to drizzle. Yeah. No matter it's if not you like have it a, in the fridge or not. It's not like a craft peanut butter situation no hate to craft but uh if yeah. it doesn't drizzle i don't want it mm. um but then i break up also a little chocolate bar a lot of the times wow. toss that on top wow i'm a menace sometimes i'll throw a little like a little couple raspberries in there so I've, I've, been, I've been experimenting this week with i chocolate. feel like the one thing like i didn't expect from you is how big of a sweet tooth you have oh my god like I, like before i like got to know like because I, I don't have a <laughs> sweet tooth so it always shocks me when people have such a sweet tooth even people people who say they have a sweet tooth they'll meet me and and then they'll sometimes look at my listen. I have a pretty good diet for the main meals, but it's but the dessert it's where you the lose snacks it. Snacks in between. If I have any kind of like Swedish berries or anything oh at my home, God. you just have candy. You know what? Stocked I, at oh, one hundred percent. You gotta stock it with the snacks every every time you go grocery shopping. Often I'll go grocery shopping after this podcast. You should see the 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 damage I do in oh the snack. Oh my God! Aisle. Yeah. <laughs> Send a photo. I actually really want to see. I'd be so curious. <laughs> Sarah, what about you? What are you eating or drinking this week? Also eating. I went for a cozy bowl of ramen, and Ooh. I. I feel like because I used to make ramen at home a lot and then I was in like a big Uber Eats like ordering ramen. Okay. But I went out for ramen the other day, which I just haven't done in a really long time. And I forgot pl- how amazing you it is. Where you went? I don't know the name of it. I think it it's, was Ramanition because I saw you tag it. It wasn't. Is that that's not what it was called? <laughs> oh really? No. Well, shit at Ramanition. It started like. with a K, I think. Oh, okay. I don't know. It's it's in City Place. Oh, definitely it wasn't ramen then. No, it's in City Place. Uh, and I've lived like near this ramen place for three years. Never been. So oh. I finally went. Delicious. It was so yummy. It was so good. And what did you get? Like, what are the, did you just get like regular toppings? Get the ramen? Did you get the egg in there? Uh, I don't like the egg. Tara ate the egg for okay. me. <laughs> um, I don't know. Just like the chicken katsu. Is that mm-hmm. what it's called? I think the, so. Like regular one. But I got like the one with the garlic oil. Yeah. Yeah. It was yummy. It warms um, you up. It warms me up. When I was a poor university student, there was a ramen place near the TMU campus that was like up on the corner at college. Yeah, Yeah, you know what I'm talking about? Where it was like on Tuesdays, they had like $7 ramen or something. It was like so dirt cheap and you could go and get like a bowl of ramen and I could get a Sapporo that was like $5 and Mm -hmm. my entire meal would be less than $15 and it would be like just cozy and like fill me up. fill me up it was so good so i feel like it takes me back to the nostalgia of those days but yeah i just had like cozy ramen i need to go out for ramen more often Ooh, that's good. i know I it's went, about to be I, summertime though, i went so like whatever okay i was in summertime before i played a soccer game last summer i went out for ramen with Haley. Uh, we're big ramen fans as well. That would be a really difficult thing Haley to eat before you play an, soccer. Yes, and Haley has an egg allergy, and there was like a two for one egg deal. So the server was like, "Oh, would you like her eggs?" I was like, "For sure." All of a sudden, I have eight half eggs in front of me, and I was like, "I can't, I can't eat this no, many eggs." No. <laughs> Jesus, that's a lot. It was good though. Um, what are you watching or reading this week, Sarah? Okay, so I already posted a review of this on TikTok if you want to go check it out. But so my book club, I'm in a book club now, full adult mode, whatever. My book club last month read a book that was a very heartwarm, like heartwarming Reese's book club story. It was called This Is How It Always Is. And it's about a transgendered child and their life and they're like overcoming the adversity. And it was a very like heartwarming book. This month, because we let a different girl in the book club group pick the book every single month (laughs) well like every month you switch right whoever is host how we operate our book club is whoever is hosting book club the following month gets to pick the book that we're reading Mm -hmm. so like 
Alana picked this book, but all she did was Google like book club books. Like she didn't know it. And the one that came up was Twisted Love, which I've seen over TikTok knowing that it's a smutty book. I was told, but no one really also warned me how chaotic and just bad this book was. Like it was like it was to, to a point where halfway through the book, I was like, I bought into the chaos of it and riding the roller coaster because I was laughing. Mm-hmm. Three times I threw my book across the room because I was laughing so hard. Or physically? I was like physically like I can't like what the hell just Couple happened? Couple holes in your wall now. It, they're almost, but it was so chaotic and not good. But I'm so excited to talk with the girls about it because it's just gonna be one of those books that's gonna be hilarious to talk about. Like the smut scenes are (laughs) interesting like they're not even like like ones that like it literally turns you off oh interesting. yeah it doesn't do what it's trying to do and i was literally like like is this a popular book like what from stuff you've seen on tiktok what are people saying about it do you people like it? But that's bad in my opinion because like one, why are we like, and so on my free page now I'm getting fed twisted love things and like girls like quotes that Alex, the like love interest, the yeah. guy says, but this man is the most toxic man I've ever read about in my entire life. Oh. More toxic than Tam Tam from Akatar, which is saying something. Do you think that so, people identify that he is toxic? No, I think it's because it's supposed to be like this like bad boy, like, mm. and look, there's a difference between like, and I read a lot of romance books, the Bruley like, the grumpy guy that you're trying to like, he's only nice to her. There's a difference between that and literal psychos that kill a bunch of people and are like possessive and toxic and misogynistic. And that's what this book like was. The fan fiction for this book is actually just going to be people writing about like getting this person arrested. Yeah. Like, like it was just, <laughs> wa- it was a wild roller coaster. And then my TikTok comments are now flat with like, well, everyone doesn't like the first book. The, it gets better. I was like, what are you talking about? Like, if this are you going to are you going to give the second one a try? I think I might read them just to ironically. See. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like just that's to an see. investment though. There's like six books or five. I don't know. There's a lot, but anyways, I th- I just am really concerned that there's like 19 year old girls out there reading Twisted Love, thinking that like this is like something we should like be romanticizing which it is not yeah it was just crazy was it a fun read at least it got fun once i realized that, like once i bought in and was like this is chaotic and not because yeah, yeah, yeah. like what i kept saying was was it a good book no mm-hmm. not written well story was all over the place made no sense but was i entertained absolutely okay then this is good so, because this is actually kind of along the same lines as my what i was watching this mm-hmm. week I went to see the new Ghostbusters movie in theater. Is that the one where it's like everything freezing over? Everything freezes. Paul Frozen Rudd is Empire. in it. Paul okay. Rudd is in it. Big character in that. There are actually a lot of great comedians in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, James A. Caster. A. Caster, I think is his name. British comedian. He's like, he's super funny. I love this guy. Um, not an amazing movie. <laughs> That's not surprising. Not fantastic. I feel like it's one of those ones that I got the gist of it from the like, 100%. trailer. A hundred percent. You could watch the trailer and you'd be like, this was way more entertaining. Granted... I think that there needs to be a place in the world for fun movies to go and see in the theater that are not like blow you away. You're going to get a 10 out of 10 or a 5 out of 5 on your letterboxed that are going to be like life changing movies. I want, I I really enjoyed myself. There's nothing like going to the movies, went in the afternoon on the weekend. Got oh, I love that. A good afternoon movie. I know. Um, after you said that, um, we're it's like the best. on the it's afternoon the best. or afternoon movies now. Getting some snacks. It's, the best. it's a chill, like just under two hour movie. A little bit of action. A little bit of a few laughs. It was but a good time. This is this is where I think I love Letterboxd, but I think it's kind of where it's like so. Is it too pretentious? It's where it's ruining movies a little bit because not all movies are meant to be good movies. I'm not going in there with a notebook trying to like write a a critique of Ghostbusters. Exactly. Like some things are meant to be mindless Mm -hmm. and fun and stupid. And like some of most people's favorite movies from like the early 2000s and like the mid 2000s, whatever, are not just 100% bad this movies is a good that point. don't make this any is a good sense point so i think people like take this like ratings and stuff and become like cinephiles too seriously like they're not meant to be good movies they're meant to make them a bunch of money at the box office do you think paul rudd is signing up for ghostbusters being like oh yeah like the script just spoke to me like it was really like <laughs> absolutely not paul rudd's like oh i can make a quick 10 mil on this like absolutely for one sure. month of filming, i'm done but some movies are meant to just be chaotic and not great, but they're fun. And I just want to chew my Sour Patch Kids and Oh Henry bites and a exactly, little bit of popcorn. Exactly, exactly. I you, can have my popcorn and M and M's, and I can just sit there and mindlessly watch I, something that will make me laugh or make me entertain or give me something to talk about on this podcast. I actually felt a little embarrassed when I was. I haven't even rated it on Letterbox because I was like, I don't want to put this on my Letterbox. Someone's gonna be like, Oh, you watch the new Ghostbusters? That's a that's a wrong feeling. I'm against that. No, don't do that. But this is the issue: is like my Letterbox is like 
I rate it the sec. I don't sit on ratings too much. I rate it the second I get out of a movie. Like Little Women has five stars to me, but also I'll give something like, I don't know, what's like a like a a shitty Netflix rom com. I'll mm-hmm. give it four stars because I was like, well, it was good. Like I enjoyed myself because my Letterbox ratings are basically. I should if I maybe I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on my Letterbox right now and I'm gonna rate Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire four stars. Wow, <laughs> you're entertaining. But it's I'm, like, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna rate it that the uh, the snacks were delicious. <laughs> and so, like as an example, I watched Poor Things. Was it a beautiful movie with incredible acting? Absolutely. But I, did I enjoy myself in that movie? No. Mm-hmm. So it's getting a low letterbox rating. And like anyone but you or one of those bullshit rom-coms is getting a higher letterbox rating. Can I appreciate good cinema? Yes. Does it mean that I want to watch all the time and sit there and be pretentious about it? Absolutely not. So people got to get off their high horses on letterbox and just know that bad movies are good movies. Sometimes. Could, couldn't sometimes. Couldn't agree more. Couldn't agree more. Sometimes. With that being said... What about what you're listening to? Okay, we got the Ghostbusters throwback. soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just who are you gonna call nonstop? Uh, no, I'm throwing it back to one uh, a friend of the podcast because mm. you hosted a live in person interview with him, Jordan Davis, back in the day. We never <gasps> yeah, released the episode. Ago. Yeah, it's not true. We did release the episode. Did we? Oh my god, we did. Go back and listen to that. I'm making things up. Uh, it's a good episode too. It's fantastic. Um, but we oh we didn't release the live session show. that he did oh, right after. The song. Yeah, well, we weren't legally allowed to do his. I we session. did because he's a great musician so and good. he just came out with a new song i want to get it right jordan davis i don't know if it's a featuring or they just like release it together i have no idea who she is ann wilson well i'm assuming it's his song then if it, i haven't listened to yeah it. i wasn't quite sure but it's called country gold it is a classic country banger listen i have not heard a jordan davis song that i don't like he's he only does bangers and he's really good live yeah and he's a great dude like yeah. that makes it like the trifecta makes it even better. Uh, um, I have tickets to his concert that I need to sell because I'm not going to be here now when the concert's here. So you can take all right. Well, want. yeah, send, <laughs> I'll send you my ticket master yeah, exactly. uh, email. email address. I love that. I love that. <laughs> I love it. You're like fully in like a country era. This has been like a real big development over the course of the podcast. I feel like we've watched you enter being a country I think so fan. too. I, I think I have changed into a country fan. Like my most, oh, the other thing that I'll say that I was listening to this week was the, uh, just a little bit of a teaser of Morgan Wallen and post malone's track together mm. as his album's coming out at the end of I'm april i'm really I excited think. to hear that i think that that and the beyonce album are maybe the two albums that i'm most excited for right now and both of them and country tortured poets department yeah well are the country tracks on it because no, uh not, <laughs> what about you what are you listening to okay well i'm listening to two things because i need to do a shameless plug first the self-care sunday series yeah i listened back to myself which was so funny. One of my friends texted me being like, you're so soft-spoken on the podcast, which I was like, this is your way of saying I'm not soft-spoken in real life. But it was because it was like, that was the vibe. I was like sitting there like in my feels. like Okay, what is it for people who don't know? Um, it's on this podcast feed or on this YouTube channel, depending on where you're watching. And the Self-Care Sunday series is just going to be like me brain dumping mindlessly by myself, talking about my thoughts, feelings. You can add it to your Self-Care Sunday routine to feel like you're not alone and you have a friend. And we're just going to get more vulnerable. And I was saying that like sometimes it's hard because I mean like, we joke a lot together. That's good. It's a huge part of our relationship. So it's like mm-hmm. really easy just to end up like these episodes being like, like the cause they're so fun and it's lighter and everything. I'm not saying I'm just going to be like depressing the whole time in this series, but I think that's where it gives a space and lends itself to talk more about that stuff yeah. and with work and life and all that stuff. So the self care Sunday series is going to be dropping in when I feel like it. I'm not holding myself to like, I don't know, to, like high of a standard for like so a, te- a teaser for the current episode that is out right now what are people looking to get oh well, i talked about burnout um mm-hmm. how i'm feeling because i kind of t- talked about it in one of the other episodes that we had of this podcast and so i talked about burnout i talked about my self-care sunday routine the sunday scaries why do we get them so yeah hopefully it can just become a resource for people i love it it's great go check it out please okay so and then on the lighter side the other thing i'm listening to okay i do this every goddamn time we have an artist on I become obsessed with the artists after we've had them on the podcast. It happens Virginia every, to Vegas? I cannot stop listening to Virginia to Vegas. Oh. It happens every time. Like, same with Sophia, Jordan Davis. Like, like all these people. Like, we've been lucky. Like, Preston, Preston was the same way. Like, Pablo, yeah. Like, Kaiza, even. I went back. And, yeah. Like, all of these people. It's like, I do my research, obviously, before the episode, and, like, for the interview and whatnot. But I'm so Ralph focused. as well. Yes, I'll mix it. Like, there's just so many artists that we've had, I'm lucky enough to talk to. But then I, I like get mad at myself. Connor Smith, another one. He's like constantly on the rotation. 
so Virginia Vegas is the most recent example because like I knew some of the songs I was listening to it like before the episode or whatever but now I've just been listening to it non-stop like I ordered the vinyl I ordered his oh, greatest did you? hits vinyl I was like do you want to what I won't stop fucking listening to this so I might as well and I was excited you know what I was I was pumped about is that uh, go if you haven't listened it's the previous episode to this probably yeah. um, but that he released the greatest hits album which was great but then yeah. I'm like you know we need new music but then he said there's new music coming this no, summer no I know he said it's gonna and he described it as a Toronto summer so, so like and I realized the type of music he makes is like my favorite type of like poppy like mm-hmm. it feels so like summertime good vibes whatever so I've been listening to it at the gym a lot but it's it makes me so annoyed that now I have so many more questions and I and I <laughs> you know what I mean it's like I don't appreciate it in the moment as much as I should and then I become more obsessed after you know it has need happened to- every single time we have we an need on. to bring this thing that i feel like we've been dropping little bits of manifestation for a little while we need to bring the talking fast music festival to life oh that my like god brings <laughs> a few of these artists just for I a mean, live kidding. show we'll interview all of them with these follow-up questions that have come to light after <laughs> our recording of each episode and then they'll play some music I would love if we did a Talking Fast studio sessions or something That'd where we fun. did like a thing. We go back to the Riverly, but everyone performs at it. Yeah. That was what our first live show was going to be, but it's just that we planned it in typical Sarah and Jacob fashion with a week and a half before. It's hard to get people to, like, to come people. back from tour or something. But we to- had like, we had like, well, Virginia, like Derek was one of them. We had like Brett Kissel saying he could have, like we had all these yeah. people saying they would have done it. So maybe we should we'll give ourselves two months for we'll the give, next one <laughs> maybe <laughs> maybe uh but yeah it happens every single time but whatever uh sarah what was somewhere you went this week somewhere i went was nowhere oh we stayed in i for the first time in forever had like a wednesday tuesday nope that's not how the week works Sarah. <laughs> i had a wednesday thursday friday saturday s- sunday i had plans like four days in a row with no plans Really? And I had the house to myself. No one was on a trip. Apartment to myself. And I felt rejuvenated after because I like did not I just went off like my vibe. Like so Saturday, like um Haley and I ended up making plans because like I wanted to see people. I was kinda going a little stir crazy being by myself that long. But I could just like clean the apartment. Like on the one night I had like this this I felt so productive, I felt like an adult. And I came home and then I like went to the gym and then I went and got groceries, made myself dinner and was cozied up in bed with a book by like nine PM. I don't know. I just like didn't go anywhere. Did like, you feel exciting. any pressure? Just like, oh, maybe I should have been doing something right no. now. No, like, and that FOMO, that was the best that was the best part. I had no FOMO. I felt no pressure. Granted, like none of my friends were doing anything either, so it's not like I had the opportunity to have FOMO, right. but I didn't feel FOMO at all and it was amazing and it was so refreshing for me to have like that many days in a row because I'm really notorious for like having like one day. Mm-hmm. off for myself but having that many in a row like I got all my stuff done I just like I don't know did stuff intuitively as I felt like because I knew at the time to do it and then it like made me appreciate Sunday so much more when I had plans I got to see everyone it just felt wonderful and I know for a lot of people not having plans multiple days in a row is a normal thing and that's totally cool but for me it is not normal to have a free schedule like that not have like work obligations or any of that stuff that I had mm-hmm. to get done and it was fabulous I loved it I loved it what about you where summer you went okay well I did something a little bit opposite I did an all day well actually post run club shout out to the run club I guess I went to run club on Saturday but like that's physical activity doesn't really a couple it hours count. Was yeah fun. it doesn't count I didn't just, do anything like yeah, crazy got yeah. a workout in uh, right after that, I went to a curling bonspiel. I played it. Crazy. In, which I had never curled before. Uh, oh, yeah. How'd that shout go? Shout out Ronnie for putting it together and organizing a team. We had like eight people over the whole day who kind of swapped in and out and then joined another team. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was fun. I had never curled. And I was like, okay, I didn't do any <laughs> research about how to curl, what the point system was. Did you know the was. ice was pebbled though? Like, no, did you, I, I didn't know. No, I, get on, lo- I swear, know. I swear I got you on the ice. You didn't know it was pebbled ice? No, and at like a, a couple hours <laughs> in when they started pebbling the ice, I got up off of the seat and like went and stared down the window being like, whoa, look at that little backpack. It looked like a Ghostbuster. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> trying to like pebble the ice with this stuff. For anyone that doesn't know, it's not just a flat sheet it's of ice. It's not. It's, it's pebbled a little grippier, ice. and I guess like helps with the well. And that's lack why that's why you for... sweep so that there's the friction and it melts down the ice and it can go faster. <sighs> and I swept. I'm still. This was two days, two and a half days ago sore? now, and my I, I have like weird muscles that are I know. sore on like half of my body on the right side, and then the other half on like the. It's just. Oh, it's just a strange did you situation. Find, did, you get, like, did you find that you got better? Through I got day? a lot better and there was the learning curve of it. And this is what I loved about it the most is that I'd never done it. I had no idea how to do it. Uh, luckily had some friends who like had 
curled before mm-hmm. and were nice enough to be patient with me <laughs> teaching me how to do it. Uh, the learning curve was pretty quick whereby you kind of get a lay of the land of like mm-hmm. what you're trying to do after you know one game. Um, but after it, the frustrating thing was after you figure out what the goal of the game is and mm-hmm. how to kind of do the basics, you can't really dial in and get like a lot better in a short amount of time. No, so no. still by the end of the day, I sucked at it. But when I lived in Winnipeg, when I was four years old, my parents were about to join a curling club when they thought we were going to live in Winnipeg. Cause like, like how in Ontario, it's like you Winnipeg play hockey. Thing? It's just like a big like prairies thing. So like okay. in, in Winnipeg, they were going to join a curling club so that I could start curling at four because like that's Whoa. when people start curling. Like you, like people think curling is like a really easy sport because they watch it but because it's so much precision. Like it's you learn, you learn to start I know the curling whole at, wrist, like, like... at like four or five years old. That's wild. Crazy. Yeah. And I don't think I was doing anything with my mm. sweeping, but I was sweeping. I was trying. What about something that you did? Okay. I was excited about this one. Uh, everyone who follows me on Instagram knows that I am a huge fan of Peloton. I'm a big pe- do you post you don't post about peloton that you know what much i'm gonna rephrase Instagram. this i'm gonna rephrase this i used to post about this you did. a lot you did. i you feel like now lot. though it's like and you're right i should post more i should post even more about this uh i didn't even know you still used your peloton to be honest i know well i took a lot of time off however now that i'm getting back into running and just trying to live a fitter lifestyle mm-hmm. i just hit a 35 days in a row doing both whoa cycling and their strength workout uh training sessions every that's single impressive. at least one every 35 single day. days in a row yeah so that's I'm doing, crazy I'm trying to do like nice at job. least 40 minutes a day of some kind of cardio and strength training very impressive um, yeah so i was just like you know what i'm just trying to live a little bit fitter as especially getting back into like i said running and trying to <laughs> train for the marathon um but i was excited i was i was proud of myself so i was like i'm okay, proud of you that's, that's impressive. something i did this week i love uh, that what about you something you did this week well, I posted like a tease on my Instagram story of, well, Haley and I hung out on Saturday night and we like had sticky notes on the wall. And if anyone's been listening to this, every single episode of this podcast, episode, literally episode one, I like made some comment about like maybe in the future, like you guys will know about like if everything works out this like thing oh, that yeah, I've been working yeah, on in the background. Yeah. I don't remember how I worded it. I should have gone back and listened to it, but I like teased it. And so I have that clipped off for like ever. That thing has to do with the thing that we're working on now, but that one fell through. So now we're working on a different thing. Can you give any more info? Nope. <laughs> I got the I update like an hour ago. You can't, I can't. I can't. So I will let people live at the edge of their seat. Ooh. But all to say is if things go well by the end of this year, for sure, Z, I'll be able to talk about it. It is pretty fun. I can attest to it being like a very cool thing. Yeah. So it's just like something I've always wanted to do. So I'm just like... In my free time, I don't have any, but in my free time. And it was a big some, jump. It was a big jump. Like, it, it we feels had like a, you got over a roadblock. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wrote, that's a good way of putting it. Because like, we took a long, long break. Mm-hmm. Our, we were really down in the dumps when the first thing didn't work out. But now we're like, it's like we have a new, like, lease in life. All you need, if you have, especially if you have a creative block, I should not condone a lot of alcohol, but drink a couple bottles of wine, you know get some sticky you know notes, so... and it will literally change your life. What? Sticky notes and a b- couple bottles of wine. And I was like, I can take over the entire world. <laughs> I, I, I knew something was up when I watched your vlog on TikTok from this. And the vlog started with, so I went and picked up two bottles of wine for <laughs> Haley and I. I was like, whoa, we're going to two bottle night. We're okay. about to. <laughs> but granted, there was other people there as well. But um, I really would love if I could tell everyone what the sticky notes are because I'm not good at keeping my yap shut. But I need to in this case. So it's it just know that one, one day I finally can talk about the thing that I've been working on for years you guys can go oh my god that's what it was and i'll clip together all these clips and it will all make sense and you'll be like that's what she was talking about and i hate being that annoying fucking person that's like oh i'm a Big secret project coming. i don't know if it's coming it's just you might never know about it but by the end of the year i think we'll be able to talk about it hopefully maybe <laughs> POV, we're just hanging out in a living room. Uh, we're in your car if you're driving. POV, we're just... Where do you listen to podcasts? Um, usually when I'm walking to and from work. So, mm. yeah, and I guess... In motion. Oh, do you want to know what, though? Because I was, like, 
home by myself for a few days I was listening to way more podcasts because like I can understand how you could go a little stir crazy otherwise and like feeling like you're not having conversations with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like there was a moment on like Friday where I was like, I have not spoken to a human like all day. Let me put on a podcast. But I was just listening <laughs> to a bunch of podcasts. So actually I can understand now if people like if you live alone or like Your whatever. phones or no? I wasn't listening with earphones. I had podcasts like to have it on. In the space. I had it on the TV, so then I could like watch it a little bit if I wanted to. So I'm, I mean, like I'm always curious about how people listen to this podcast, but we're just going, we're just having like friendly chats today. Going with the flow today. Going with the flow today. Um, what I really wanted to know though is what is on your FYP currently? On Should I always just open it up? Yeah, I'm curious. Because you know what, this could go, this could go several different ways. A lot of the time, it's renovations and chairs there's there's mid-century modern design yeah. inspiration and like renovations for sure a lot of brick layers actually That's i have a very a part blue of collar heavy tiktok yeah like and you know what they're not even north american a lot of the time it's a lot of the time it's like british trades interesting yeah i don't know if i maybe have to should move over there and i recently see. learned you can reset your for you page which i didn't know is that my video that this, just no, came this, is a, this is my first one that i just opened was a color palette studio oh do you want to do top three what opens up oh okay i have a color yeah. palette studio that's like a design paint tiktok okay second one that's gonna come up uh that's an ad that's a client <laughs> <laughs> okay a it's news it's news about real estate developments in vancouver so the high price of living in canada is one that's and then the last one is a pasta recipe. I feel like that represents your interests. Okay, let's see what okay. mine are. Um, first one is <laughs> this one is about Canadian. Like a lot of my for you page right now is the cost of living in Canada. Okay. So this one it says hashtag cost. currency exchange hashtag United Airlines Canadians expensive. So a lot would have been like on is people comparing to the states and the cost of living in Canada that's been all over my for you page the past couple days the next group. video is an ad so no oh another ad <laughs> oh um this is a photo like this Do you get is, a lot of slideshows yeah like, the, like um, i get a, this is a photo slideshow of a girl that just says grateful every day i don't really know what this is Okay, and then no I got something from one. the Junos. Okay, a little music. So that makes sense. random. That's not your, normally what, what my your free page for you page is. typically look like. Find that recently the for you page reacts so quickly to something you watch. Like if I watch one person's video, I then see like seven more of them, which I don't love. I like, love that. Uh, no, you know what I love about that is when it happens. Uh, like. On for like St. a Patrick's series Day, for oh, example true. it's like someone was in their condo and they were partying and they're and like what is, can my neighbor see and then two videos later the you like you there. see the other pov yeah that's I true like that. i find though like it's it's always what i'm searching right so like right now i'm going to the olivia rodrigo concert this weekend so a lot of it's like olivia rodrigo like concert info or outfits but it's so funny because it's coming from like young girls like 18 19 year old <laughs> girls and like i'm gonna feel so ancient at that show but it's fine i'm just getting my information on the guts tour i gotta know is everyone dressing up like what's the vibe are I they yeah we're dressing up what that's you the do? vibe i'm wearing a matching purple little like cropped suit situation with a skirt okay i ordered these big sparkly star earrings that feels very like because Olivia Rodrigo kind of dresses like 90s, early 2000s. Yeah, you, are you doing any chunky like I'm doing a chunky, bracelets? Oh, um, maybe. Like, I'm know, going to like an event where I think we're making bracelets before. So. Okay, yeah, I find isn't like the Guts album art and a lot of the artwork have like chunky charms essentially. Am oh, I making that up? Well, she sells like those old school Claire's charms. Like those yeah, bracelets yeah, yeah, are yeah. back. Which like the chain link ch Claire's bracelets. You know what? I, I noticed you are kind of wearing something similar. This was a popular one. I almost bought one of these which uh, one? last year, the Happy Face one. Oh, the uh, Lisa Goslin bracelets? Uh, maybe, probably. Yeah. I like the I love it. yellow one. I almost got you it. You should get it. <laughs> Tara bought me this one for Christmas. It's green. Shocking. Oh, really? Yeah, it was so cute. It's Shout like a friendship bracelet, but not. And then these are permanent bracelets that. Oh, these those are the ones that are welded on. Hold on. Where, where did you get that? Did we talk about this already? I don't think we've ever talked about a permanent bracelet. So it, we're going to have three. to describe it for the people that are not watching on YouTube. I have three of them. First one was at a L'Oreal event from two years ago. Second one, Allie and I got at a Taylor Swift market last year. Mm -hmm. Third one, I recently got at the Fitting In premiere. 
the only thing I have like a pain is they they don't match in color and that kind of bothers me. I like I them. I like the mismatch. There's I like a like gold. Them. There's like a silvery one and one that's kind of a golden. Yeah, they're kind one. of yeah, they're they're a mix. I like. Why do they stress you out? I like uh, them. the permanence of it, which is weird because I get a lot of tattoos. <laughs> but I think it's like uh, um, I get claustrophobic. Like for example, I have one ring. I oh, wear so, one oh, ring. Oh, so you you'd feel suffocated like, by having yes, something on permanently. When I got this ring, uh. Even that pulling it off, my like I have it on pinky. It like gives pinky. you like a little like. I was like I was my heart always drops when I pull it off when there's that little tug and you're like, is this gonna come off this time? Well, the thing uh, is like these are permanent bracelets that are like these are welded onto or they look sparked good. onto my wrist. These ones are not permanent, but I don't take them off. Like Do you I, sleep in your bracelets? Absolutely, and shower. I've I've been taking you these shower off. in your bracelets. Absolutely, I have a friend that showers and sleeps in full jewelry. We're talking rings. This, this person probably doesn't take off their makeup. My when necklaces. Like... I don't. I sh don't take off my necklaces either. Whoa, for real? Ne Did you not know this? I don't know. What does Haley do? Take them off. Oh, I don't take off my necklaces or my bracelet. Am I? That's normal, though, is it not? Yeah, but I think like sh she'll like. But I feel like other people also will. Rings take are the only stuff thing I will take switch off. Them off. You kind of have a. This. These are my stacks. Is what You're... you would call them. Like these okay. are these yeah, yeah, yeah. are my st current stacks. They stay on. My necklaces right now. This is my current stack. But what I'll do is usually when I have to get a spray tan because I can't have them on when I'm getting a spray tan. You I'll take up them the and I change up the stack once I get a spray uh, tan. That's usually what happens. How often do you spray tan? every few months before okay. a trip whenever i'm going on a trip i get a yeah, spray yeah, tan yeah, yeah, so okay. that's but i yeah i sleep in all this like these like that's why i need to buy like nicer jewelry because i shower in it like it can't i only sleep i sleep in my ring sometimes this is this is gonna sound superstitious and it is superstitious uh i bought this ring on a whim mm -hmm. um and i was like just because i want to and but now i have it as like my deal closing ring so if there's like some good stuff that's coming the next day i'll wear it at night. <laughs> <laughs> that's like you man it's your manifestation yeah right? exactly kind of do you want to know what's gonna be interesting i remember when i worked at yahoo because i worked with a bunch of men and my one friend was getting married he like i had all these rings on my fingers he was like can i try one of your rings i was like sure why he's like well i've never worn a ring before and i never really thought of the fact that a lot of men until they are married and maybe never. now is different and also we live in toronto where it's like the ossington like cool bros wear jewelry yeah, yeah, and paint yeah. their nails and it's all very different if you've walked but through kensington once and yeah up a you pick up a couple of uh, rings i think it's also like a lot it's but I think it used to not be masculine to like wear jewelry. So For I sure. think a lot of men don't wear jewelry until their wedding band. So I will never forget. He was like, and yeah, I want a lot of wedding bands are fucking ugly. Yeah. It's, you don't get a lot of choice. And so he had never tried on a ring before. And then he was like, that's going to be the weirdest part about getting married. Like I'm going to have to wear a ring every day. And that's something that I think women don't even think about. Cause like we wear, most women wear jewelry a lot. That's a good point. So for you, you're already one step there. You're used to wearing. So if you're someone that's like a little claustrophobic about like things, at least you already have that that pinky ring on so that's if, true. if you, marriage you know, is in your thought, future then you could you won't be as weirded out i've thought about other rings as well there are a few that i want to get i want to get like a custom ring with a little bird on it as well why a bird <laughs> i'm obsessed with magpies obsessed obsessed with magpies yeah that's what my chest tattoo is so. you have a chest i guess i would have never known you have a chest tattoo. <laughs> I have why a, would i ever I have a know detailed th magpie right you're in lying the, to me right in now. the hairy style okay spot. so for everybody that's <laughs> listening to the podcast it's under like chest but like it's yeah, like harry it's style between spots, the like, pectoral muscles where harry styles butterfly is is what he's talking yes, about yes it's not nearly that big wow. but i do yeah and i think the bear tattoo that I ha i'm getting i'm also gonna put it on my on my torso on my interesting uh, did that yeah. spot hurt a lot that one hurt the most, yeah, because it's right. It, it, there's like a lot of detail right in the direct middle of like, I guess your direct. I don't know what that's called. That's called, but like your, there's where your ribs your meet, kind of thing. Your sternum is that I what don't it know is? What Probably. It is. Um, We're not doctors. <laughs> <laughs> it hurt a lot right in the middle, but yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, but the rings. So I wanted to get one that kind of matched the tattoo with the bird. But on why it. magpies? Is that too personal, or is it just no like magpies? It's not personal at all. It's a. Uh, I am someone who loves collecting things. Is anyone who. Well, this is true. If you follow my Instagram, you know I love chairs. Yeah. That's for sure. Maybe not Peloton, but collect you, them all. Collect exactly. Them all. But you know the thieving magpie. It's kind of mm -hmm. more of a myth than anything. But like how magpies, they actually put it in planet Earth, which is kind of bullshit science. Uh, but it's the bird that like goes around and collects shiny things and brings them back to the totally identify with it. I, I I love magpies, so I'm like, you know what? Let me. I have one on my body. Let me toss on a ring. Uh, but I just haven't found a jeweler to actually like make one that I think looks good. So if you are someone out there who makes jewelry, hit makes me up. Makes magpie rings. I don't have an animal that I love enough that I would put on my body. No? I don't think so. I've like, there's animals I've always liked. I've always liked kangaroos. Like I've thought they're kind of cool. 
but I don't have one that's well, like I'm afraid of kangaroos. Why? Because they'll kick that's, you. I feel like it's or because of like when you animals. open up their stomach, it's like not actually fuzzy. It's like literally. Like, you know that, right? When you is that a fact? I didn't know that. It's not fuzzy? Oh, my God. I'm what is it? so Does excited it like? I get to be the person to share oh, this Oh, is you. it just... No, is it like... Uh, is it gooey? When you... Oh, okay. Everyone thinks, oh, my God, cute little kangaroos. Like, the like Joey, the Joey goes there. on the little pouch. You probably the have a fleece in- lining. It probably looks like a Patagonia sweater inside exactly. that kangaroo pouch. And, but... I think I was in high school when I learned what the inside of Sarah's a kangaroo show me pouch a photo looks like. Of this. She's pulling it up on her phone. The inside of a kangaroo pouch is essentially like it's essentially a hole into their like Can you see inside. veins? Can you see veins? Yeah, you can. Here I'll show you. My for you page is now gonna be covered it's in not, kangaroo. The internet's as well. not letting me look this up. It's probably like this is like inappropriate. Safe searches on? Oh my yeah. god, this one's like <laughs> this is explicit image. How did you find this? I think I was it was like a, it was one of those things that like everyone discovered at the internet at the same time. It must have been Vine or like Twitter or must something. Have been, where must like, have been off the internet that day. Yeah, because everyone discovered it at the same time. <laughs> this is so gross. Okay, she's turning it. Oh! <laughs> it looks, it look, it looks, it is gooey. It is gooey. It looks like, it looks like when you, you'd open up the inside of someone's like You know what it looks body. like? It looks like if you had like a bunch a bunch of canker sores in your mouth and you like turned your mouth inside that's out. what it looks like and then you put like, i think like people assume it's just like a pouch for holding things but no it's like it literally go it connects into like their veins it's just crazy it's just like there's no skin would there. you be afraid to go to australia because of the animals no i really want to go to australia but like snakes do you no. do well with snakes and yeah, spiders I'm, and all I'm that i'm fine with snakes and spiders and all that are <sighs> you not no nah, i don't mess around. i i'm okay with spiders some spiders i don't mess around with snakes though. my dad's petrified of snakes too shout out dean shout out dean he's petrified of snakes i don't know i'm fine with all of that i rodents i don't like i don't love rodents like I, and it's not because i'm scared of them do you I'm ever just, interact with a rodent what do you mean interact? you ever have like a friend with a pet rat yeah i had friends i i Photos on Facebook still of me holding my friend's pet yeah. rats. Like, that's different. But if I, like, randomly saw a mouse, like, that would freak me out. But even, like, I in once, New York, seeing the rats run around, like, actually, those I'm are different. Okay those are with Those it. are basically citizens of New York at yeah. that point. They're, I, like, they have jobs and but stuff. But I don't, I don't think I'm really scared of any of that stuff. There's like, I, that I am more so scared, scared of rodents scared. now. Mm-hmm. As a kid, I wasn't. As a kid at the cottage, there was, like, a sand beach and, mm-hmm. like... <laughs> Probably shouldn't do that this these days, but like we dug holes so animals would fall into them. What? <laughs> Little rodents. Why? Not like break your leg, fall into it, or something like that. Because we just wanted to like you just see wanted to animals. trap them. Yeah. So like I I honestly didn't think it was gonna work. Um, and one morning though, we had dug a hole the night before and I went and went to the beach and I just shoved my hand in this hole and there was a little vole, which is like a, a similar to a mouse, but maybe more aggressive. I don't know. And it bit me. <gasps> and uh, then there was this whole scare of like, am I going to have rabies? Am I not going to have rabies? And We're then... still unsure to this day. We still don't know. Well, actually, you are clear <laughs> of rabies. This is a fact that I know. As long as it doesn't develop within 12 months, you're pretty much clear. You're not going to develop rabies. Oh, interesting. I Good to know. took the chance with a dog bite two years ago. I know. And then you, 12 months later, you lived to tell the tale, so you were fine. Yeah, my brother actually put it in his calendar. He was just like, the so day we'll- <laughs> Jacob will not have rabies. <laughs> oh, my God. We celebrated. <laughs> I love that for you. The only thing I'm scared of is fish. Whoa. You're, wait, you're not <laughs> afraid of spiders, but you're afraid of fish? Terrified of fish. Always have been. Why? My cousin, who I no longer speak to, so this makes a lot of sense. When I was a child. Give me the tea. I can't give you the tea. There's a lot of fraud involved with that tea and family drama. That's like a long stretch. That's Whoa. another okay, give me the for fish tea. Day. Give me the fish, fish tea. We would go fishing with my grandpa. And he would take the sunfish off the thing and put them down my bathing suit. What? Mm-hmm. And then they would like. Are sunfish eat... not big? No, like the little baby sunfish, like the little ones that are like. That's a cancelable offense for sure. I'd put them down my bathing suit, and then I would run off the dock screaming because I had, could feel fish. Like I like literally, I'm getting chills talking about this right now. Oh, that is that is traumatic. Sarah, that's trauma. That's, that's trauma. That's Sarah. trauma. <laughs> so I am terrified of fish. This is the thing. I went snorkeling in Cuba and I like cried tears of joy because I actually did it. I'm not scared of those little fish, like the ones that They're are like minding their business. I'm scared of Canadian fish, carp, oh, salmon, trout, trout. Those things do not. They do look not aggressive too. Fuck. They oh a trout. Oh yeah. If I like, if what about I turtles? was in a lake, I'm fine with turtles. Snappers. It's literally just fish at the supermarket. I walk past the aisle of fish so quickly. I'm like, nope, I can't look at them. They're beady little <laughs> eyes. I can't do it. <laughs> do you eat fish? Yeah, sometimes. You're like, yeah, motherfucker. It's like my revenge. 
I no, I don't I don't fuck with it at all. <laughs> Dang, it's, I didn't know that about you. It's my like phobia. Like I have you gone to the uh, uh, Ripley's Aquarium? Yeah, I went a few. Well, yes, I've been twice. Um, and I went with uh, Libby and like Max, who's like my nephew basically. Yeah, and we went, and I just <laughs> like walked him right through the Canadian fish thing. I just put my head down. I'm like, we're not going through this part. We're going to go see the, d- the dories oh, and the Nemo. you probably don't mess around with eels then either. Mm, well, it's not that like, I just haven't seen one, but yeah, I don't really, any of that. Any of, any like of those fish that are in like a Lake Ontario. I don't, not my vibe. Sharks? I'd be fine if I saw a shark. Mm. Shark, dolphins, any of those big things, totally fine with. It's literally fish. Like I would be more scared of a salmon than a shark. Really? Which is a, I understand it's weird, but it's just, it's who I am. It's my story. So I have this like hypothetical for you. Okay. So a thing that I do often with my friends is I post these hypothetical questions, whatever, but this one came to me because of someone else's real life situation. Okay. So I am, you know, sometimes you're on people's close friends and you're not really friends with them, but I think they just pick up. Do you like that? Do you like close friends on Instagram? No. I mean. Am I on your close friends? I don't post close friends. Well, you that's not what be. I asked, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> no, you would be on it because I think I have it set to just like everyone I'm following. I've yeah, a, yeah, okay. a, the only time I've ever used close friends is if like I have a job opportunity for someone or something. Like I don't yeah. need all of the TikTok world to necessarily know about it. Okay. But I don't post close friends. I think it's it's risky to post close friends. Do you know how easy it is to accidentally post in your actual story? Not worth the risk. Not worth yeah, it. Yeah, that stresses me out all the so time. So I don't post close friends. I think that's what Snapchat's for if you want to like have that. So what was the hypothetical friends. or the, what, the so friend post? So this girl, posts. and I think friend is a loose term. I don't even think I'm friends. It's like a colleague. But She's you made like it in, to her close friends? I, I, yes. Crazy that I'm on her close friends. But regardless, she posted her close friends, which I'm very happy she did because this was a very interesting story for okay, me. Okay, yeah. She posted her close friends that, hey guys, like I am traveling right now in the Philippines and... Uh, the trip's been great, but I've actually been like in and out of the hospital with dengue fever. Is that serious? Yeah, apparently. And it sounds serious regardless. Dengue, if, enough yeah. for her to like post to be like, I've been in and out of the hospital. It's serious enough. And then I was like, okay. And then it goes dot, dot, dot. Oh, and my friend left me here and went on the rest of the trip without me. So they're alone in the hospital. <laughs> so she's like, or... needless to say, I'm going to be coming back with one less friend. Whoa, she, wait, she was putting this person on blast on her close friends list? And I don't even really know this girl. And I was like, Do you know oh, the other friend? I don't know. No, I don't know. Okay. I don't know like anything. I didn't okay. know this girl was in the Philippines. Right. I was like, my job was on the floor. So I'm sitting at a bar with some of my friends while I see this story. And I go, oh. so I immediately obviously pose the question. Okay, guys, if you were traveling with somebody, let's say the Philippines, I don't mm-hmm. know, like Southeast Asia, I don't care where you are. Somewhere far away from Somewhere home. far away from home. Where maybe like you don't know the medical system that like whatever sure. where language you, barrier maybe language Who barrier knows? different things you get sick or your sorry your friend gets sick do you pivot the trip and like miss your next few couple of days or whatever and stay with them and there's just two of us there's only two of you Ugh, that's tough or do you leave. How expensive is the trip? Is maybe oh my, my first God, question because I'm no. I might leave. No, I might no, leave. You won't. No, yeah, you won't. I might. You know are what you I would. For, I, you know you what I might do. Right I might be like. I might pivot the trip and be like. I'm gonna. I'll come back at night, but I'm gonna do a little day no, trip. Okay. I can do a little ATVing I, in the afternoon and then come back and feed you your little different. jello at night. That is fine. You cannot leave the city. Like go to a different. Get a, you can't get on a plane. If you and I are in. Philippines say it's Manila and I have dengue fever you can't fly to like you can be like okay our next couple of days we're actually supposed to go fly to fly to Bali so I'm gonna go there without like you can't what if I talk do- to the doctor and I'd be like is Sarah okay is she gonna be, yeah. no, it's <laughs> she's the- good for a couple of nights right <laughs> no you can't you can't you wouldn't you would stick around a million a million percent how do you go enjoying the rest of your time if your friend is in the hospital Ill. I guess, I guess. Because so. uh, this is the thing. At mind, its like... very core, I would want someone to do that. Like, I, if if the roles were reversed, but I had this discussion. I've I've brought this up to a lot of people. The consensus that we have is you can do stuff during the day. I'm not expecting you to be like holding my hand and like batting with a towel while I'm in the hospital or while I'm like recovering from this. You know what I would do though? I would get that person on a plane back home. I'd be like, I'm taking care of you. Go, 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 go. But like, if <laughs> no, if it's something that you know is also like, I think the whole point is like, oh, oh what about this? I'll add on to the hypothetical <laughs> oh here. My God. What if the, what if the friend, uh, you're the one that's not sick. And what if the friend says is, is, 
pushing you. You're like, no, go go on the rest I of the still trip. Wouldn't, I don't think I would do it. I, I don't think I would literally be able to. If like when I go to Southeast Asia, Haley and I are going to do Thailand together. Yeah. If Haley gets sick in Thailand, I'm not leaving her in Thailand <laughs> and going to Bali. Like that's insane. That's insane. Like, yeah. Okay. That is, it's, it's tough. Like, Maybe I wouldn't do that. I think it's easy to be like, oh, like it's a once in a lifetime trip. It doesn't have to be, first of all. And second, like you can just pivot the trip. I think the whole point is like she's ill right now, but she could be fine in like a few days or like whatever. But like just pivot it. You you cannot like I would be like, no, we're cutting no more. Like what would you do during the day? Like would you in, you can do anything during the day. You're still like places where there's beaches and this like it's not like you're in I don't know. If they passed away, you could do like a oh weekend at God, Bernie's Jake. situation and just like take their, take them around a little puppet and uh, take photos and send them back home. Okay, like so this is safe time. to say I'm never traveling with you like, <laughs> like that. It's just, I, I think, I don't know. Questions like that sometimes is really funny because you can like see a lot about a person, like what they want to say for. It's true. I think I would probably stick around realistically. I think most people would. Yeah. And you know what? You'd make the most of it because you'd be in the exactly. hospital or whatever. Or and... if they're just saying having to stay at a hotel and like, I think this girl was out of the hospital, but she had to like stay at the hotel. I actually do like kind of the chaotic travel stories of like that kind of makes it a exactly. fun story. It's kind of like a, a hangover, you know, everything goes wrong, but it's still a fun adventure. Exactly. I, I just think it's... You're coming you back are a bad home. Friend. You're coming back home with one less friend. So then it got us thinking because when we were talking about this a little bit before the episode is, like, have you ever been like left by a friend somewhere yeah, have or like you? abandoned? And I have really not like okay, like home loan situation. Are we abandoned talking? Abandoned like, is a really dramatic way to put it. No, we weren't in another country. <laughs> was it by these family members who like? Uh, no, <laughs> no. Um, okay, well, I guess is abandoned too dramatic of a word? No. Set See? the scene. It's Sarah's nineteenth birthday. Big night. In the city. Yeah. Girls have their, this is 20, when did I turn 19? 2015. 2015. Good year. It's 2015. We've got our little H&M blocky chunky heels and our little black mini skirts with our little <laughs> crop tops on. Hair is pinned straight. We've been drinking our Palm Bays. It's your birthday. It's my birthday. My friends are in the city. We're all going out. We're going to go to... EFS, because that's where we were going for my 19th birthday. That sets the scene. Obviously, it was my birthday, so I enjoyed a few too many beverages. Yeah. It's a kind of a tradition for me, to Got be honest, at silly. this point. Got a little silly goofy. But do you know what? I was like, we're going to the club. We go to go to the club. And this note, I have friends in from home like whatever but these are like i'm with mostly toronto friends are you in a cab and a no we go well it's that's not really where the you story get there is. you get there we get to efs and we're in line and i need you guys to know the context of the story i used a fake id for a full year before i turned 19 so drunk me got a little confused because i was using my real id for the first time ever but he asked me a question about my id i guess he didn't think i looked like my card i don't know maybe he just knew i was really drunk Something happens. I say information from my fake ID. No. So he thought I was using a fake ID on my 19th birthday. Because it doesn't match up. When I'm wearing a fucking birthday pin that says it's my birthday, all this stuff. And he could have looked at the date. Not a lot of logic on him, but just assumes that. And maybe it's because I was too drunk, but the way my friends interpret it was like, he was like, he literally didn't believe you were using a real ID. So then obviously I start crying because when you're 19 and you're drunk at the bar, you start crying. Because I'm not getting in. You're not getting in. My friends go, just go sit at McDonald's and wait for us. Whoa. They're not my friends anymore. I went across the street at the King and Bathurst McDonald's and spent my 19th birthday. My one friend, who I'm not even friends with this girl anymore, but at least she went with me. My one friend from like Coburg who came up for the night sat with me in that King and Bathurst McDonald's and we sat there for two and a half hours while they went into the club to the point where because I was staying at the one girl's house so I had nowhere to go like I literally had to I had to stay there yeah 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 I didn't have a key that so is they rude. they went to EFS and then they came and met up with us at the McDonald's after and I sat at McDonald's on my 19th birthday crying for two oh my hours. god if we're gonna, if we're gonna clip crazy? this out and if this clip is gonna make it to 
those girls and you should be ashamed of yourselves. Do you want know what's so funny? It's one of those things that like, you know, when something <laughs> traumatic, you know, when something happens <laughs> that you like block out, like we were talking about our 19th jellyfish birth- down your swimsuit. Or- it wasn't a jellyfish, <laughs> but that's great. But you know what I mean? Like when you, you for- almost forget something happened. Cause yeah. like, and I think I always just brushed it off as like, Oh, whatever. Like, but you're it's like, fine. that was like, not cool. Well, now in hindsight, I know it wasn't cool, but that no, was I know, just no, like, saying, yeah, yeah. but at the moment I, I, I was upset in the moment, but I don't think I really like realized how fucked up that was in the moment. Like realistically, what should happen is all of them should have been like, Oh my God, screw you. Screw EFS. Like we're taking Sarah and we're either going Pivot to another bar night, or go we're going home, home, get some drinks and like, but, like change the that plan. just so describes like 19 year old girls, like being like all about like going to the club. You know what I mean? Like it was yeah. so, I, in a hindsight, I obviously know that was horrible, but it was one of those things we were talking about recently was my friends and I'm explaining this story and their jaws are on just the like, floor. They're like that happened. I was like, yeah, man. Ugh. Yeah, that was a TBT. That's that tough. I'm, I've never been that. I've never been really abandoned like that. Oftentimes in those types of situa- situations, I've been the one running away. Yeah. If I get a little too silly in the you past, I've been known to. Yeah. <laughs> I have some friends that are runners. That's where we all have each other's locations. <laughs> yeah, I know. But I'm very against location sharing as well. <laughs> I am so against location sharing. It's not even funny. Interesting Get take. Get this. Haley shares her location with me. But you don't share I yours don't share with my her? location with her. I no, I no. wouldn't. I would never. And I was like, at the start of our relationship, I was very, listen, I'm never going to do that. Why? I'm so fascinated by this. As the Brits would say, privacy. I'm not doing anything sketchy. I just don't want the, the what do they call it? The panopticon of like the big tower with windows that you can only look out of, not look into in a prison. The prisoners always think that they're being watched, even if there's only one guard that can look at one location. It's a classic little tale. Um, for me, wow. it's, a, it's along the same lines where I'm like, well, someone could know exactly where I am, and I don't like that. So I... I agree, but I'm in too deep in my location share with too many people How now. How many people? You should just turn it off. <laughs> so as a, I will say as a woman, and when you it's travel together, safety. it's a safety thing. But I don't think you should have it on 24-7, especially with your friends. I mm. think it does more harm than good. Then you'll have like, I, I mean, it's happened like with my friends where it's like, oh, our friend is like clearly at a guy's house. And then like maybe she wants that privacy, but like people are looking or like, I don't know. I think it can cause more harm. Or maybe you see all your friends are hanging out together and you're not. I just think it. I agree with you. I actually do think it causes more harm than good. But I think in certain instances, it is important, like for safety on a night out or traveling. I would agree. Yeah. The 24 hour share, the. I love the meeting up and being like, here it is here. Have it for 20 minutes. Well, you we find each other in this parking lot kind of thing. Um but yeah, not all the time. And it also takes away the opportunity to be like, oh, you're never going to guess what I did yesterday. And they're like, well, you were probably at the hockey game because well, you were sitting there for three hours. So that's the thing is like, I, I have everyone's location because they have mine. It's just like, but I never look ever. But I do have people in my life that I know look all the time, mm-hmm. like constantly. It's, it's, if I would I say feel it's way like, worse than like scrolling on TikTok or I, something like that. I feel that. like it feels so intrusive. You like, dooms, when you doom someone doom scrolls the like find my friends app is awful. I agree. And then also what happens sometimes is like, unless you're doing like the share till end of day, then like I have some of my colleagues just because they've never unshared with me because like we were, were on a work trip together and then they like accidentally never like unshared it that or whatever. That did happen to, uh, we were at a concert that happened to, uh, I had the location of like one of Haley's friends. And then just she forgets about it, yeah. And then I was like, why do I know where this guy is? Yeah. What's going on? He eventually took it off. Um, but That's an interesting, I do think it, I think it was a weird thing where it became super normalized and like kind of fun for like people for a while. But now I do think I'm seeing more and more discourse about people being like, it's not healthy to like have everyone's locations no, and everything. definitely not. And I feel the same way. I feel like it's a weird thing to, I don't think about it often because maybe it's because I don't look at other people's locations. So I don't think about it. I do remember watching Harry Potter growing up and seeing the Marauders map and watching like everyone walk around That's the castle being like, like, this is going to be so, that would be so cool if we had that. And now I'm like, actually... I don't Put want that map it. away, Harry Potter. Go and yeah. do, do something fun. <laughs> I think the until end of day is a great way to do it. Like my sisters and I, 
don't have each other's locations and but we will share it if we're going to a concert together or something and it's only ever until end of day and I think it's almost like an unspoken thing between us all being like I don't want to know where my sisters fucking are you know what I mean I don't want to know like where and they like, are I don't let's know let's have some secrets let's have some secrets you know what I mean yes and people you're allowed to have secrets and privacy I agree I I'm a little into deep. Maybe I'm going to go and shut off my location off everyone after this conversation. You should. I've been thinking about it for a while. I saw a TikTok literally today of a girl being like, I, it was a girl talking about her dating life. She goes, I had a girl ask me to share location after two weeks of seeing each other. And she was oh, like, Am hard I? No. and then she got mad at her for like not wanting to share it. Mm -hmm. And it's, and I think that's the other issue is like, I think people get mad or think like, well, what's wrong if you don't want to share the location? Like, what are you hiding or like whatever? But that's 100%. not the case. Like you just said. But also if those people are having that thought, that's probably on them. That's their own insecurity. And talking, it looks worse. <laughs> it looks worse because I also have had friends. And it looks worse when you have their location and then they shut it off for the one day. And you then I know comes, you're doing something you shifty. Know it's like it's more obvious. So if we just unless all like in a 24 hour period, someone shows up with like a surprise birthday cake or something, a present for me after that, like that yeah. off period. You're like, I'm not yeah, a, yeah, you're, you're about to get shady. the FBI after you. Yeah, you're doing something shady. So I agree. I think it's like I think as a society, we should just collectively agree that we don't need to have our friends locations. I'm I'm all for that campaign. For like we have Canada's gonna maybe have an election in the next couple of years here. Let's maybe make that like the main <laughs> campaign point. A main campaign point. I love that. Okay, my final thought for today. I think I've made a TikTok about this like years ago. I've made so many TikTok videos. I at this point don't remember what I've put on the internet and what mm -hmm. I haven't. But I think you can tell a lot about a person about what reality competition show they think they can win. Oh, okay. So I'm very curious, which reality competition show do you think you can win? I think, okay, I think that I would win. Or like have the best opportunity to, like you don't yeah, have to yeah, actually yeah. truly think you're going to win. Like I, like I, you, it could just be one that you think that you would most thrive on. Okay. One strategy was, and then one actual game show. So our, our reality show. One, I think I would be like a mind game player more so than like physical mm -hmm. or like uh puzzles and that kind of stuff uh i would think the interpersonal any game that like favors so like interpersonal big relationships brother, big survivor. brother survivor alliances i'd be all over that mm -hmm. or amazing race because i am pretty good at being on time reading schedules mm -hmm. and figuring out like and pivoting when something goes wrong how do you think our dynamic would be if we were on the Amazing Race? Amazing Race it? Canada, if you're listening to <laughs> No, I'm being I'm being 100% serious right now cuz I think you and I are similar enough in the things that matter and different enough in the things that matter that we could do we well could on maybe the Amazing win. Race. We could maybe win. Because yeah. I think physicality, we're both like fit but not like beasts. Yeah. I think puzzles, there's probably some that you could do and some that I like we would Fears. know when to like do a what are they called like the time blocks what are those called the oh when they like, freeze yeah like stuff? there's a little bit of strategy involved still sure. right we would get that and I think it's the pivot you know being nimble if something's mm -hmm. going wrong or just like powering through some of the maybe less appealing you're challenges. really good at talking me off the edge I haven't had <laughs> to do it for you yet but I think I could. <laughs> Uh, sometimes they have to park and I, I'm a good parallel parker. You're good at driving. Can you drive <laughs> stick shift? Cause that's the big Ooh, thing. Ooh, I could learn. Uh, I'm okay. not very good at that. No. I <laughs> am. I don't drive often, but I'm a pretty good driver. I just don't drive often. Can you navigate? A million percent. I can, I'm so okay. good with directions. You take me somewhere once I can go there without having to look it up again. Okay. Maybe for the next few months, I'm going to just like learn how to drive, how to drive stick drive just stick in case. Perfectly. Yeah. Just in case. <laughs> I mean, I, I think we'd be fine. The only thing I've heard about the amazing race that's difficult is because like you can't have your phone you can't do anything like whatever obviously because i can't it looks stuff up but like they said for food because cassie day was on it yeah, right right she said the hardest part was like you eat takeout every single night i can do that for sure <laughs> <laughs> so just give jacob a bag of candy but i feel like i i can't fathom like i think we could get frustrated but i can't fathom because we've been in scenarios where it could happen that us yell i'm not a yeller so like i would never yell at you granted at the same time i think that we would make good tv because it there are like heightened moments and i think that we could sell it to the camera as like let's just yell for a little bit here yeah like lean into it a little bit you'll yeah. be like it's good for the brand it's good yeah. for the, <laughs> the long-term play but it wouldn't affect us in terms of actually like competing uh, yeah 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 Agreed. And I don't think it'd be too high, too low. I think we'd be going for like the fun and the vibes. Mm -hmm. I'm not scared. Are you? How are you with like eating weird things? Though? I could, I could do that. So for sure. if you could take one for the team for that things, I'm totally fine with heights. I'm fine with 
snakes i'm fine with any oh, of true. that stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you you I like crawl the fish... through the snakes yeah. i'll eat the snakes no 100 <laughs> percent. like when they make you eat the cockroaches that stuff if you yeah. want to do the weird food i can do like snakes rodents reptiles whatever mm -hmm, mm -hmm. this was not the intent of this question but we just submit this as our casting tape. i will literally just clip <laughs> it off i did that for survivor they never called me back but i was like other than the amazing race what do you think you could win okay so it's so funny what you think you can do versus the perception of other people because i asked my friends this the other day because i just have like dinner party questions always mm -hmm. in my back pocket because i can't live in silence apparently <laughs> and my friend kayla was like you'd be so good on big brother whereas since watching big brother canada this season yeah i don't think i'd be good on big brother because i hate more than anything in my life being lied to like being lied to is the one like, thing b burns a bridge for you burns a bridge like it really like, it's hard to come back from and i like it's the one thing and i don't I just can't stand being lied to. Yeah. And Big Brother, all it is is lying. Where at least Survivor, there's there's um deceiving people, and then there's lying straight to their face. I feel like Survivor's a little bit more deception and not as much like blatantly lying. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. like it's more about the alliances and like I like the idea with Survivor that a lot of the games and stuff are based off of like strength or like you could you could kind of train for them or make yourself. I don't know. You yeah. could help out that way. I think I'd do better on Survivor than Big Brother personally because I just would not mess well with being straight up lied to because then if I watched it back, I'd be so angry and embarrassed. So I don't think I could do it on the Big Brother. The next one after that would be like an Ultimate Fighter thing where you get in the ring with the people that wronged you and just <laughs> you demolish them. So maybe like, I mean, Amazing Race, you don't have to really like do anything to the other teams other than like put them, they, like you can make them do yeah. extra challenges yeah, yeah, yeah. or things like that. So maybe that one could be one more. I'm great at running through an airport. Had to do that True. a couple times. Could run through an airport. So, I mean, maybe that's the one we end up on. <sighs> could I don't you know skydive? Could you skydive? Sometimes they're like... I could do it. Yeah? For the money and for the bit, I could do heights it. Heights is the one thing that would get me. Really? I could do yeah. heights, though. I mean, it's it's the classic, I'm not scared of heights, I'm scared of the falling part, but also, like, whatever. Like, they're not <laughs> going to put me in a situation, I know how television works and the liability, they're not going to put you in a situation where, like, you, you legitimately can, die. die. Yeah. No, they won't. Like, they're too scared of liability. So, I think, all of this to say, I think, like, are you good at puzzles? Because I'm not great at them. I'm, I'm pretty okay. good at puzzles. I do all the New York Times puzzles. Oh, in my the God. Morning. I do any of those. Amazing. You can handle <laughs> all of that. So, like, if we have to, like, climb up the side of, like, a mountain or something, I can do that. Or, like, the skydiving, bungee yeah. jumping, any of that stuff, I can I'll do. I'll do the uh, crossword puzzle as you jump out of a plane. Perfect. That sounds like a really <laughs> good trade off. I don't even know what reality competition shows there are, but I think it's, I don't know. I always find it so I funny. I would love to do one. Like, it'd be fun. It's I a think fun so too. life goal to, like. Well, like, that was what Moose said when he came on the show, and it was on my favorite things he, he was like i just always want to go on a reality show he's like i wasn't mm -hmm. trying to become like a reality star i just thought it'd be so fun to go on a show that's such a unique experience mm -hmm. and so like that's where like as i'm watching Bra big brother canada i'm like this does look like a fun experience but then when i see they've already been in the house for 20 days i'm like they have to be in there for like they're in there for 90 <laughs> the days. other the other thing that i think i could or win 70. and and Haley, like this you know what i mean when i'm saying this I have no intention of going on any kind of reality dating show, but I think that I could win the like bl love is blind. Win love is blind. I know there's no real, win, but like to get out of the <laughs> <laughs> to get out of the pause. I'm not gonna say this on the podcast. No, you can't. <laughs> what? What? I was gonna just say like the opening and be like, uh, like uh, create create a character for myself and get someone to propose. <laughs> no, okay, you're laughing. Because it's like against the whole purpose of what Love Is Blind but you know is. What? But Did that's you not what see this everyone TikTok does. recently of the like Bachelor or was it Love Is Blind? The guy had a hopefully had a, a partner outside of the show. Yeah, man, that's that what I was about to say. I watched this season. Like people just go on these shows, and this is kind of what I meant by that: is that people go on the shows to get famous, and I think that I would <laughs> I would like that. Like, not to get like, famous no, but like, necessarily, no, but, but like, like doing it as a bit, like leaning exactly, into the character like, of it. Yes, like creating a guy named like David Smith who runs Ooh. like some kind of foreign exchange trading company and uh but is also an at-home cook and it's just a sweetheart looking for someone to be the yeah. uh you know the the big spoon for him. what would be really funny is if like 
you were deceiving someone and then it turned out the other person was also lying. It and actually it, is then... Haley lying on the other side of it. <laughs> we, we still match, but it's like you completely different characters. <laughs> that that would be good. That's what Love is Blind should do. <laughs> See if you can match. Oh my oh, God. Oh, put, should... put on X's with different personas. Like they, oh, you can't, you only have like, you can't say names or like all of a different name. Ooh, okay, wait. That's good. We have to trademark this so they don't totally steal it. If you, I would like a producer credit. Um, yeah, so because Love is Mine, the issue is right now is that everyone goes on knowing that it's just to become famous, right? Because yes. like, the first season was legitimate because it was like, you didn't know if the show was going to be popular or whatever. There was something similar to that. What's that called? The Circle. It's not the like a dating this, show, but, no, like but it's, it's something like, a little bit similar. Yeah, it's similar to The Circle, where it's like you're, the circle is when you're like, you, you have can a choose, you can you put on a persona, you, you, you yeah. could be you. But what if you mix kind of The Circle slash Love is Blind and some of the people, and I guess it's almost like the ultimatum too, some of the people in the pods are like exes or like maybe they went on a couple dates it's all actually people that have interacted together before and you see and you're not allowed to use your real name but then you like fall or maybe you're only allowed first names i don't know something like that there's certain details you can't share yeah that you can't share to see if maybe it's like a second chance romance oh we got a name second chance romance where you use the names and it's the idea of the pods oh, and it's and you, blind dating. Oh, and but it's but like you with people, find out you know that an ex, a old partner, something like that is there, but you don't know who they are. Which you one they don't are, know who they are. Who I think we might with. have to use like a fake voice thing at that point too. Yeah, 100%. but that's yeah. There's like exes or people you went on one date with and were like, oh, I wasn't interested in them. That's good. Second chance romance. If anyone at uh, Netflix or Here's any of the big we'll streamers we'll wants go, to contact we'll, me. You and I will go on Amazing Race. We'll win that. We'll get in with the producers and then, and then we'll we have can to take, make the show. Then we have the startup money to start it. 100%. We can build our own pods. Genius. Okay, so the first step is Amazing Race Canada has to cast us first. We built our own pods. Like, <laughs> we literally built like outside. It. And then there's a pod about the pods. Like we oh. record everything and they can listen to I am kind it of surprised there aren't so those don't they exist they should exist more like wrap up after show there, there are there are there i know doesn't... they're out there but like they should be more popular yeah that's true there i think there is like some of the girls from i just like, want to listen to jeff probst on a podcast he, is what i want does he have one? Oh my god jacob yes does he have one this is like the kangaroo pouch yes jeff probst because you know like um rob has a podcast Boston who was rob. on survivor no not Boston rob <laughs> different rob he rob has a podcast was like the survivor it still is the survivor like wrap up weekly podcast okay yeah survivor was like the brand cbs was kind of like okay well you're taking all this like money from us like we want to be able to have our own so now there's the jeff probes podcast which launches and it's a recap in every single okay. week hey i gotta get back into survivor i haven't watched in a while but i would this I would season watch is not good so i would not recommend this season <laughs> but unless the survivor casting person is watching actually no i would tell them that this is my issue i need to go on a survivor rant for two seconds and then the podcast will be done Oof. what happened to villains i'm not saying i would be a villain because i don't think i i could be but I, like, I would be. oh, well, talking about playing like a character, it'd actually be kind of fun to go on and play a villain. Social media has ruined villains in reality shows because people get crucified so badly on the internet for one mistake or one little like mishap that yeah. it doesn't make it worth it to kind of like be a villain on a reality show. But like old school reality shows, there was always like the vi- the villains, the people that were ruthless for the money and they were the best like people to watch. Johnny Fairplay who said his grandmother died. But didn't actually, yeah. exactly. Like those are the people that are you miss on those reality shows because you're actually there for the money. The issue I have with Survivor right now specifically, and even like Big Brother, these other shows, is everyone there is like a super fan. Big Brother's actually pretty good, especially Big Brother Canada. Like they're all ruthless still. Mm -hmm, And mm -hmm. they're like, they're hungry for the money. And like, I really respect that because I've missed watching reality shows where people actually give a shit about winning the money. They're not just like, they vote someone out. They're like, love you guys. I would literally throw my torch if I got voted off Survivor. I'd be so angry. Yeah. So... I want, like, it's a million dollars. It's a million, like, one and million. It's a, it's a game. It's a game. And it's, like, the only, if you were told you had, like, a one in 15 shot in the lottery for a million dollars, like, you'd be like, oh, my God. Like, I need to, like, do whatever I can for that. And I don't get why that's not the mentality anymore on, like, Survivor specifically in these reality shows. Bring back villains. Casting people. Like, stop casting super fans who are just like, I'm just so happy to be here. La, la, la. Like, it drives me insane. And I think it's finally the switch. I just think people were scared to be villains because of social media. But I now think people are craving that again. Like they want the bad guys. They Mm -hmm. want the people that are like more ruthless. You don't have to be friends with these people after the show. It drives me insane. I'm not saying I would ever be a villain because I have a complex that I need to be liked. (laughs) But I would love 
Oh, to but bring I think you can villains. do both. I think you can be a villain and be well liked. I guess that's like a Parvati or Boston Rob were kind of like that. Exactly. And that's the thing. We still talk about those players because those are the ones that are memorable and actually do things. There's been a few over the past years that like are like that, but man, I hate when they're all just so like, love you, best experience. But you, I think I it's it, like it is a fun fun part of it if you can be cutthroat to someone's face. I it's like listen, would love it's, that. it's not anything personal, but it's I am. It's not personal. I'm going against you. It's a game. It's business. I'm trying to get a milli. Mm -hmm. See you later. Maybe I'll take you for dinner when we're done. It's not personal. It's all a game. <laughs> and I understand you have to be like, there's certain things with the jury and whatever, and you can't just, but I don't know. I just need more reality villains specifically on Survivor or else it's going to burn out the show. So again, maybe if we don't end up on Amazing Race, put us on Survivor. This is also what I want Survivor. Imagine like we both end up on Survivor, but we don't tell anyone that we know each other. I want that to happen. I want a season where they That'd bring a bunch of people together that do know each other, but they're all pretending like they don't. Didn't they have one recently where they had like a son and a mom or something? Mm, maybe I, I made that up. Maybe, but that happened before. But anyways, bring back reality villains. And I felt good about this episode. I felt a little ranty. Pretty ranty, yeah. But I think we both had a little extra caffeine today. We did. This was a three coffee day for me, which is why I'm kind of like wow. buzzing. <laughs> I'm buzzing right now. <laughs> Bring home and like I don't know, like clean my entire apartment or something, to be bouncing <laughs> off the walls. Uh, you can subscribe to our podcast, Talking Fast, the one you're listening to right now, and make sure you please give us five stars. We would love a five star review, especially if you agreed with any of our takes, even if they were hot today. Mm -hmm. Like, comment, subscribe if you're watching on YouTube, and also follow us on all the social platforms at Talking Fast Show. If you want to give us a voicemail question, you can email us at talkingfastshow at gmail.com or send us a DM. We'll listen. We'll try and give you advice on the voicemails. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>